I'm here to tell you that the truth is right before your eyes and you can't ignore it as much as you want to play dumb, as much as you want to hate God, you will just have to tell him you hate him because we are about to present so much truth. Okay, so much truth. You cannot deny it. Okay, first off, we want to deal with the moon splitting. What? Okay, every day you hear people talking about nonsense. You go to work, they talking about nonsense. You get on your phone, it's nonsense. Okay, nobody wants to talk about the moon splitting. Okay, now this actually happened. It actually happened. And I just want to read a Surrey. Uh -huh. And it's Surrey 54, 1 through 3. I Let me wait to Surrey. Quit tripping. Okay. okay. Thank you, Surrey. The hour has come near and the moon has split in two. And if they see a miracle, they turn away and say, passing magic. And they denied and followed their inclinations. But for every matter is a time of settlement. Okay. Now, this happened during the lifetime of the prophet. Peace be upon him. The moon was split into two parts. And on that, the prophet said, Bear witness to thus. That is Bukhari 3636, 36, book 61. And the Hadith is 140. One hour after sunset on 18 June 1178, at least five men in southern England reported having witnessed an unusual phenomenon in the sky. According to the monk, Gervasio, chronicler of the Abbey of Christ Church in Canterbury, the upper horn of the crescent moon was split in two. Now, this is a monk from a Christ church. He witnessed this. There is a few records of people, including an Indian king who saw the event and was able to make sense of it about a prophet. He traveled to Arab to accept Islam, all right? This stuff is documented. The incident relating to King Chakarati Farmis is documented in an old manuscript in the India Office Library, London, which has reference number Arabic 2807-152-173. through 173. It is quoted in the book Mohammed Rusala, okay, by M. Hamadullah, all right? So this stuff is validated by many different sources that this actually happened. But one thing I am learning, I'm learning that there is a lot of people in your face every day and they hate God. They hate God. They have no love for God. All they want is the things of this life. They are fascinated with the physical. They are into the material. But when it comes to God's word, they don't want to have anything to do with it. These same people are in your Bible studies. They're in church with you. They are all over. They hate God. And they don't have the guts to just say it outright. 
Okay? Uh, many people on this planet, they hate God. They hate God. And once I found out by actually looking at the moon, okay? And I'm going to show pictures of the moon real quick. want y'all to look at it on the screen. All right, that's an okay picture, but I want to do a different picture. I want to show another one. Mm. Yeah, right here. Look at that split in the moon. Why is it there? Why is it in the middle? And we know it was put back together, okay? But why is that split there? This would have been a perfect time to show the world that this man is not a prophet. But it's actually a split there on the moon. Okay, I don't care how many theories your Edomite come with. I don't care that they hate Allah, that they hate his messenger. I don't care. The truth is the truth. And I'm looking at the moon. I'm looking at history. I'm looking at the date, the time stamp. Every miracle Jesus did, there ain't no time stamp on it. There ain't no date. There's no specific day. You just believe it because you worship Jesus. Every church that got Jesus name on it, you go to it. You've been a part of everything that had Jesus on it. Every preacher, every church where it said Jesus is God, you've been there. The moment a man comes on the scene. And he says, Jesus is not God. You don't want to have anything to do with that guy. Why? Because you worship the creature more than the creator. And the most High had to show me this. Everything that has to do with Jesus, you are part of it. Every civilization, every organization that has exalted Jesus as God, you were thumbs up. The moment a messenger comes on the scene, peace be upon him. And he says, you know what? Jesus is nothing more than the messenger. You don't want to have anything to do with that guy. You bring up all the nasty things going in his business, worrying about who he was screwing and all that stuff. Instead of dealing with the truth because you a Muhammad hater. You hate God and you hate a man with good works. And I just have to put it out. I just have to say it just like that. Everything Jesus did is not time stamped and recorded. Yet you believe every little thing because it's coming out of the book. But when we have historical documents, we have actual proof, time stamped. And dated, you don't want to have anything to do with that because you a follower. And 99.9% .9 of Americans hate Allah and they hate his messenger. And you are following right along with them. So as much as you hate the Edomite, they're going to be your prisoner in hell. As much as you hate these Christians, okay? These Israelite camps going to be right there with them because y'all all have this one thing in common that Jesus died for your sins. Now we need to get back to where we was at. We have to get back to where we was at. And we were talking about David sending messengers and we got to verse 1. Let's read verse 1 again. This is going to be 1 Samuel 25, verse 1. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verse 1. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together, and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose, and went down to the wilderness of Paran. So after the truest prophet in the Bible passed, 
And we say that he was the truest prophet because your Bible says that not one of his words touched the ground. So that means some of these other prophets was prophesying out of their own feelings because God made a distinction with Samuel, the mule. Not one of his words touched the ground. And amazingly, after Samuel died, David goes to Mecca. He goes to wilderness of Paran. He goes to Mecca. He goes to Arabia. All right, let's keep going. And there was a man in Moon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. He was shaving his sheep. I would like to say he was butchering his sheep. He was misleading his sheep. He was misleading his own people. He was oppressing his own people. Let's keep going. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. He was of the house of Caleb. So that means he was from the tribe of Judah. Now this man Nabal, he represents the nation of Israel. Let's keep going. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal. And greet him in my name. Isn't it amazing how David is famous for the 10,000? And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he entered into Mecca in 629 CE, December, he came with exactly 10,000. 10,000 Muslims. But when we go to Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 2, it says that he came with 10,000 saints. Okay, so now we've connected this 10 with David. Okay, David means my beloved. Okay, David was ruddy. Okay, just like the prophet is described as being ruddy. Okay, David was a shepherd. Mohammed was a shepherd. Peace be upon them both. Let's keep going. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. These damn Christians is afraid to say peace be upon them. Peace be upon. They so scared, they can't even wish peace on no damn body. They act like that's a sin. They act like you're worshiping somebody if you say peace be upon you. This is how the nation of Ishmael get down. We wish peace upon all our messengers. Not just Mohammed, not just Jesus, but upon David. Upon all the messengers, we simply just wish peace upon them. What is wrong with people? I don't get people. This is in the Bible. This is a custom we lost because here we have David wishing peace upon Nabal, upon his house, and upon all he has, and he was a fool. His name was Nabal, and it meant fool. Let's keep going. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now thy shepherds, which were with us, we hurt them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel. Okay, so he's saying, look, you don't know me, but I've been protecting you. I've been watching over you. I've been keeping you safe. Even though you don't notice. Some of your people notice, but you don't notice. Okay, keep going. Ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes. For we come in a good day. Give. I pray thee, whatsoever come into thine hand unto thy servants, and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal, according to all those words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants, and said, Who is David, and who is the son of Jesse, 
There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. All right, so if you notice Nabal's attitude, he was high and mighty. He already was an Israelite, so he was snobby, was a little spoiled brat. He had a little money, and he was like a master, okay? He was very snooty, okay? And he's like, who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? Now think about it. David was the son of Jesse. And we just talked about in Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32 yesterday, how if you say anything about Jesus, it will be forgiven. Okay? No big deal. But if you say something against my little brother, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, all hell is going to break loose. Now, why do we say little brother? Why did I say that expression? Okay, because you got to think about it. Jesus came before Mohammed. He came first. Okay, so if you really was to think about it, Mohammed, peace be upon him, was younger. Okay, he came after. And here we have Nabal saying, who is David and who is Jesse? Now let's keep going. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those sayings. Now he didn't know. Okay, David is a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger. But David actually was the king. He was the soon coming king. He was about to be king over all Israel. And here we have Nabal. Like, who was he? Who is that man? I don't know him. I don't know that Arab. I don't know him. He ain't an Israelite. Okay? He ain't nobody. Okay? Because mind you, David is in the wilderness of Paran. And now, let's keep going. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men. And 200 abode by the stuff. Okay, so when you say something against Jesse, it's no big deal. Jesse was not king. Okay? Jesse was not the king. David... He was king. So when he said, who is David? Okay. All hell is getting ready to break loose. Let's keep going. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed on them. Now notice how the Bible is so amazing. I love it. This is talking about messengers coming out of Arabia. Messengers coming out of the wilderness. Okay? Specifically going back to the one messenger. Okay? At this time it was David. Because David was the uno man, the one man, the solo man who sent the message. So now David is ready for war. Let's keep going. But the men were very good unto us. And we were not hurt. Neither missed we anything. As long as we were conversant with them, when we were in the fields, they were a wall unto us, both by night and day, all the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master, and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial, that a man cannot speak to him. So he is saying this man is a child of the devil. Now this man is from Judah. Okay, I don't know what it is about the southern kingdom, but for some reason, the southern kingdom really gets it. Jesus called them serpents. He called them vipers. He called them devils. Okay, now you got to understand when the children of Israel were hammered into a nation by Moses, it was first Moses from the tribe of Levi. Who was the leader? Then it went automatically to the northern kingdom. At that time it wasn't split. But it went to Joshua. 
Joshua was in charge. It didn't go automatically to Judah like camps. These Israelite camps always assume that Judah is the leader. As a matter of fact, while Joshua was the leader, Judah was stealing. Remember Akon. He stole the wedge, the silver, the gold, the Babylonish garment, and hid it in his tent. And he was the cause of 36, yeah, 36, 36 men being killed. And so all of his household, along with the stuff he confiscated, he stole, being a thief, they were all burnt up. Okay, so now we got this man, Nabal who is called really a fool. This man is being snooty, stuck up. He was from the house of Caleb. Caleb had a great name. Caleb was a mighty man of faith, okay? And this man is called a son of Baal. Now, women represents kingdoms in the Bible. Look how she denounces her husband. Because you got to look at this story as Nabal being the master. Nabal being the king. Okay, but David, okay, I'm talking about the David of Paran, the type and shadow, okay, of the Gentile messenger. He is in that land and he really is the king, soon to be king. And here you have Nabal acting like he is the king. So let's just pay attention to how his kingdom or his wife treats him. Keep going. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and an hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband, Nabal. I ain't telling him nothing. He's so blind. He's so lost. He don't get Bible prophecy. He's so into that school that he can't see that the kingdom has been taken from Israel and given to a Gentile nation. Okay. She took the wine. She took everything out of the house and was bringing it to David. All right. Let's keep going. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the cover of the hill. And, behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Now David has said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness, so that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him, and he hath requited me evil for good. Keep going. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. Okay, if you paid attention, the last story we read in 2 Samuel chapter 10, it got graphic. It got a little graphic. Why? Not only Hanan had their beards shaved off, but he trimmed down their garment to the buttocks okay it got a little graphic okay something always gets graphic i don't get this okay but i get it i get it okay after studying it at first i didn't get it but now i get it why is getting graphic so now in this story where david is sending messengers it's getting a little graphic David is saying, I'm going to kill everybody that piss against the wall. In other words, he said, I'm about to kill off all the men. I'm about to kill the men. But he got a little graphic. And watch, he's going to get graphic again. Let's keep going. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Notice she was riding on the donkey. She was riding on the donkey. Okay, let's keep going. And fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. And let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. All right, so now you're going to understand the freedom, the liberty. That's right. 
that the women, okay, of this nation right here, what? What? because she already called him Lord, and she already about to be his. That's right. Let's see how David treat this woman. Let's keep going. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. All right, she said foolishness is with him, because his name is Nabal, meaning fool. Folly means foolishness. Look how she's dissing her husband. Look how she's dissing her Lord. Look how she's dissing the so-called king of Israel. Let's keep going. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies, and they that seek evil to my Lord, be as Nabal. Keep going. And now this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. Keep going. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, and evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. Keep going. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, and to seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life. With the Lord thy God, and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out, as out of the middle of a sling. All right, you notice, she said, my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life, all right? She is blessing him, okay? Keep going. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. Keep going. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. All right. She was allowed to give advice, okay? Not like Paul. Not like Paul. Paul wanted the women to be quiet. Paul said that the husband of the wife is the Lord of her, okay? That's different. If the head of every man is Christ, is what Paul teaches, okay, and the head of every woman is, is the man, okay, why is she doing all this talking? Why did she disassociate from her husband? Okay, she literally violates all the teachings of Paul, okay, and she's being blessed. She's allowed to talk. She's allowed to give advice, okay, and David took her advice. She saved him from feeling real bad about killing people. Because that's exactly how he was going to be feeling like, dang. Notice, she said, this shall be no grief. Okay? She just saved this man from killing people unnecessarily. Okay? Let's do that. So now let's keep going. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, Surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. There he go again. He's getting graphic, okay? Why is he getting graphic? You got to notice. He's in the wilderness of Paran. He's a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger. And everybody knows about Mohammed's so-called mishap. And that's the first thing they bring up every time you talk to them. They be like, yeah, what about Aisha? What about this? What about that? They so focus on the graphic part instead of going into the real deal truth on what he's talking. Jesus is not crucified. Jesus is not God. Jesus is the Messiah. Mary is not God. God is not to be associated with anyone in worship, okay? So now let's keep going. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, 
and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and, behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken, wherefore she told him nothing less or more, until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, but it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. Now, I just noticed, okay, it said the wine has gone out of Nabal. Now, you notice now, according to Christianity and um, Israelis and Israelite camps, they all believe that alcohol is justified. Okay, in these religions, there's this half of the beard, I would call it, because half of them believe in beer and you got half that believe in wine and you got scriptures that say you can't, you can't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. Then you have scriptures that say, oh, wine makes the heart merry. So there's this huge division about alcohol in Christianity. So it goes into the wine going out of Nabal, this fool, okay? And then it says his heart became as a stone. All right, I want to read Matthew 21, 42. Jesus said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Now, I was studying Ammon, and Ammon actually means teacher or builder. So the story, when David was sending comforters, he was sending comforters to the builders, okay? To the teachers, okay? And he said... Jesus, the builders rejected this stone. This same person that was rejected has become the head of the corner. Not only that, but the Lord says it is marvelous in our eyes. Verse 43, therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof and Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. That is a precept with Deuteronomy 18, 18 and 19. With Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. This is going into the precepts going into the Holy Spirit. Okay, if you say something about Jesus, it will be forgiven. But if you say something against the Holy Ghost, it will not be forgiven in this world and in the world to come. His heart became as a stone. Now I have a Surrey. It's going to be 274. It says, then your hearts became hardened after that, being like stones or even harder. For indeed, there are stones from which rivers burst forth. And there are some of them that split open and water comes out. And there are some of them that fall down for fear of Allah. And Allah is not unaware of what you do. So water coming from the rock, okay, God has the remedy to soften your heart. Only God can soften your heart. And here we have Nabal. His heart became like Pharaoh's. It became hard as a stone. Okay. So now we want to hurry up. And we want to get to 1 Samuel chapter 25 verse 38. And it came to pass about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal. That he died. Okay, so the Lord took Nabal out. He saved his wife, even though she was all out of order. Okay? She literally saved herself. 
and that's what you got to do. You got to disassociate from people who don't love God. For people who don't have questions. For people who don't want to seek truth. For people that just want to play games. You are going to have to disassociate yourself from people like that. And you're going to have to save your own self just like Abigail did. Now let's keep going. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord, that hath pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and hath kept his servant from evil. For the Lord hath returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. Keep going. And David sent and communed with Abigail to take her to him to wife. All right. So now he said, you know what? I'm taking this kingdom. I'm taking this kingdom. Abigail represents the kingdom. Okay, and Nabal lost it. Israel lost it. And here we have the Gentile messenger coming on the scene and swooping her up, swooping her up. I didn't see no lightning bolts in the scripture or anything. God was just like, yeah, man. Yeah, you, you can just go on over there. You can just go on over there. Let's keep going. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thine hand may be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. Okay, so this woman knew her place. She said, let me be a servant. Okay, she didn't want to be the number one woman put on a pedestal. Yeah, put the jacket over the puddle. Let me walk past what a girl wants, what a girl needs. No, this was a real woman. She said, I'm here to be a servant. I'm about to wash the army's feet. Okay, that been keeping me safe. She was a servant, but she was a woman that could talk. Okay, she was respected. Let's keep going. And Abigail hasted and arose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. Okay, so I like to call Abigail a baby gal. <laughs> a baby gal. Here we got a baby gal, Abigail. She going with this Gentile messenger. That is deep. That is deep. She riding on an ass. She riding on a donkey, and she going to be David's wife. Let's keep going. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel, and they were also both of them his wives. Okay, this is not just speaking of marriages. This is speaking of kingdoms. This is speaking of kingdoms. He took the nation of Israel. Guess what else he's taking? I'm taking the nation of the Chinese. I'm taking the nation of the Japanese. I'm taking the nation of all nations, okay? This is a picture of the Gentile messenger who is sent as a mercy to all of mankind. Let's keep going. But Saul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Falti, the son of Laish, which was of Galim. All right, so... Like I told you, these women represent kingdoms, okay? He is constantly taking wives. He's taking kingdoms, all right? And I have some books on the screen, okay? And I know I'm at my time, but I got to show this, okay? Muhammad's name is in the Parsi scriptures. His name is in the... Hindu scriptures, okay? He is prophesied of in the Buddha scriptures, okay? Now, I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to let you see something. Unlike other religions, Hinduism has no established set of beliefs and thus no universal or common view of Jesus. Jesus is not mentioned in their book, but Muhammad is. He's mentioned by name, okay? It's right here on the screen. God will send him. His name will be Mohammed. Arab, the pride of mankind, the dweller in Arabia. What is wrong with people? People is haters. I'm finding out this stuff and I'm just thrilled. Okay. He's mentioned by name in another religion. Okay. That is very appealing. 
Okay, the man is mentioned in the Parsi scriptures. I got that on the screen. Talks about a man of the Arabians, okay? Getting rid of idolatry. Restoring the house of Abraham. You know that Kaaba? It prophesies of him getting rid of the idols. That is like all of world's major religions. I know you mad because you a Muhammad hater and God has a judgment set for you. This is the day when the truth is coming out and I encourage you not to be left out. Now it's time for us to get in the word. Is y'all down? Y'all down to get in these scripts? I'm down. Come on. Come on.